Okay guys, so this is the boiling and melting points of period 2 and 3. You don't need to know about the other periods, it's just 2 and 3 you need to know. Now I'm going to explain the boiling points, but the explanation for melting points is exactly the same. Okay, so you kind of interchange the two. I have highlighted all my metals, so which make giant metallic structures, in red. I have highlighted all of my non-metals, which make giant covalent structures, in blue. And I've highlighted all of my non-metals, which make simple molecular structures, or simple covalent structures, in green. Two seconds, we'll close the door. Okay, now, the boiling and melting points for my elements in red, my metals, is high. Okay. And the reason they're high is all to do with the type of forces which hold them together. If I have a massive lump of lithium, the forces which hold them together are electrostatic forces between the positive ions and the delocalized electrons. And the same thing can be said for each one of these metals. They're held together between the positive ions and the delocalized negative electrons, electrostatic forces. And these are incredibly strong. So because they're stri incredibly strong, it takes a lot of energy to break them, hence they've got a high boiling and melting point. So that's why metal boiling and melting point is high, because the forces involved in them is very, very strong. With my elements in blue, my elements which form giant covalent structures, these are held together by covalent bonds. Now, covalent bonds are even stronger than electrostatic forces, so my giant covalent molecules, and I put in brackets, boron, carbon, and silicon, these have a very high boiling and melting point. Because we've got these covalent bonds which require so much energy to break, we need such a high temperature to break them, we've got high temperature, high boiling and melting point. Okay? And then finally, we've got our elements in blue. Now, sorry, in green. This is group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4, group 5, group 6, group 7, and group 8, sometimes called group 0. Our elements in green, these are our simple covalent structures, or simple molecular structures. And these have a very low boiling and melting point. These are all uh, liquids or gases at room temperature, as opposed to these, which are solids. That's how low the boiling and melting point is. And the reason it's so low is again to do with the forces involved in holding them together. In my green ones, my non-metals, after group four, the forces involved are intermolecular forces, which are incredibly weak. Either van der Waals forces, permanent dipole-dipole forces, both very, very weak compared to my metals and giant covalent structures. Therefore, it doesn't take much energy to break them, and the boiling and melting point is very, very low. So if I was to look at a graph going across one of these periods, what I would see is something like this. My group one would be fairly high. My group two would be slightly higher. And we're going to talk about why it's slightly higher in a second. My group three would be even higher still. And my group four, because they're giant covalent, would be even higher still. After group four, we get this dramatic drop. And it's all because of a change in structure, a change of the forces holding them together. So group five, six, seven, and eight, will be down there somewhere, incredibly low. Okay? So basically, after group four, we get a massive drop. Now, we said earlier that these group one, two, and three gets higher as we go across. The reason for that is, is because they've got more delocalized electrons <laughs> holding them together. Right. Two seconds. Also, the atoms are smaller as we go across. Remember, the atomic radius gets smaller. It's okay, I'll be finished in two seconds. The atomic radius gets smaller as we go across, therefore the ions can pack closer together. So there's two reasons why this boiling and melting point increases from group 1, 2 and 3. More delocalized electrons, so more negative charge, stronger electrostatic forces, 
and also the ions are smaller, so they can pack closer together. And if I draw a diagram of that, that might help you remember it. So if I draw six sodium atoms, they're quite big and they haven't got much charge. So that's high, because it's metallic, but not that high. If I draw six magnesium, they can pack much closer together. And each of these has a two plus charge. So not only are they closer together, making the forces stronger, but they've got more charge, more electrostatic force, making it even stronger still. If I look at aluminium, this is even smaller still. So these can pack really close together, and these have got loads of negative charge and really highly positively charged atoms, or ions, should I say. These are plus one ions, these are plus two, and these are plus three. So we've got more electrostatic force, and because they're closer, the electrostatic force is even stronger still. And that's why it increases for group one, two, and three.